Miss Sally's here. I forgot to put her her words up. I don't know why she's here. Now that we don't even have a clear pot. <laughs> you tune it too? It's no. great. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> extras.
Am I on John Ben? There we go. Good morning, everyone. I went through three batteries before we got this one to work. All right. Just uh, a few thank yous. Like the Brother Bill would like to thank those who came and helped him move. 90 minutes to move a whole household. Many of you showed up last week, so that's very much appreciated. If you've ever had a move by yourself before, you know what that's like, so he's very thankful. 34 years, right. The flowers on the altar, if you see Miss Audrey uh, Savage, please uh, congratulate her on 35 years. Brother Paul's not feeling well today, so he's not here. A lot going on this week. Can you believe it'll be October, the end of the week already? Yay. Some of you like the cooler weather, I know. The golf ball doesn't fly quite as far. <laughs> so Financial Peace University will be starting up this Tuesday. Brother Jan Zerlippi will be teaching that large classroom over in the Adult Center. You can sign up for that. This coming Wednesday is our annual Our Heavenly Father's Business Meeting. If you're interested in what our, our faith budget for next year, that is out in the Welcome Center. You're more than welcome to do that. This coming Saturday, gentlemen, we have men's breakfast. If you like to cook, 6 o'clock-ish. If you want to uh, eat, come about 8 o'clock, and we'll have um, some great food and uh, uh, good devotion from Brother Corey Abens. I'm looking forward to that myself. Next Sunday, we're celebrating Breast Cancer Awareness Sunday, and we will uh, encourage you to wear pink in honor of that. The Onslow Pregnancy Resource Center Banquet and Speaking Event. Uh, there's two of different ones. This, uh, probably the one closest to us, will be on October 8th. You can see about that in the bulletin if you want to sign up for that. It's a wonderful, wonderful ministry. They're on the front lines of saving lives. I think they said 30 some odd babies were saved last year. I think that was the number, but I'm not up on those. Youth lock in. Miss Billy sent all of our youth an email, the youth parents an email. Uh, please read that and sign up for that, please. Um, that will be next Friday, and it's an overnight. That's why we need you to sign up for it, because there's some paperwork that you have to fill out. What was that again? Two Fridays. Oh, October 8th. Thank you, brother. That's not this week, but the following week. Workers and teachers meeting, October 13th. That's in the middle of the month. What we're going to do there is we'll feed all the teachers. By the way, if you are a teacher, want to be a teacher, want to know what we do for teaching, we encourage you to come to those monthly meetings. We'll feed you, and then I'll spend about 30 minutes with you, uh, and then we'll get you back in time to do um, the evening service, the Wednesday service. And the final announcement, Mom's Night Out, October 15th. That's for our, our, our deployed spouses, our single moms, and our widows. I think that's all I have. Miss Jessica. Great. Let's stand and sing.
may be seated. Praise the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We hope that you recognize that God is our creator and that indeed the whole earth is filled with his glory and part of his glory is you. Uh, Christ in you is actually the hope of glory. So we're so glad that you're here. Uh, we're um, glad that God in his sovereignty set aside one day of rest. He gave us a pattern after he created the world in six days and someone asked me even this morning, do you believe that literally? Why, yes, I do. Sign me up. Come on. The Lord said, let there be light. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Uh, Jonah really uh, got swallowed up into a great fish and spent three days and night. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. We believe the B-I-V-L-E. Well, uh, as we um, go to the Lord in prayer in just a few moments, I want to uh, say that yesterday we had a celebration of life for a sweet member of our church, uh, Miss Sheila uh, Starosolsky passed away, and she only joined the church last November and was relatively new to town and came to Center View and then the pandemic and so hadn't been able to come and got sick and uh, her kids had COVID and she was ministering to them and she had sinus conditions and just thought it was just a normal thing. By the time she got around to seeing her, uh, getting care for herself, she was already gravely sick and she uh, passed away. Um, I, I will tell you this, that uh, yesterday, uh, many, many, many years ago, I, I had a, a, a younger sister that passed at age 30 and as, a, and as a brother, I came, I wasn't ordained yet to the ministry. I'd, I'd been licensed to preach and was a deacon and so forth. But uh, uh, basically, I did her um, celebration of life service. And um, the pastor who was going to preach kind of said, well, we've already heard the gospel. So he just basically led a prayer and sat down. And yesterday, when I came to do her service, her kids did such a marvelous job. She was a mom, a single mom who not only raised uh, four kids, but adopted a couple more. She, when her kids were grown, she entered into foster mom business and uh, fell in love with the first two boys, uh, Caleb and uh, Luke, and just went ahead and adopted them. And the family was here, brothers from New York and New Jersey and Texas and, and uh, uh, siblings. And uh, it, was, it was a celebration of life, and the kids led it. And uh, they gave a very clear explanation of the gospel and of, uh, you know, salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone, and that mom led the way in all that. And her brother, she led her younger brother to the Lord, and, and he finally got saved and called the sister and said, Sheila, I'm, I'm with the Lord now. And she goes, good, what church are you going to? He's like, whoa, hold up, I just got caught. Don't, don't be pushing on me now. <laughs> but he did get involved in a church and has been in a church for the past 20 years and is now a leader and a teacher. And so... I just want to say it was a celebration of life. But do pray for the family. And you don't have to know someone to minister to someone. Uh, the lady Sunday school class, I said, you know, can you uh, prepare some goodies? And, and you did. And we just were able to uh, uh, provide that family uh, who had about 55 guests to uh, have homemade desserts and so forth with the meal that they had already ordered. So just thank you for stepping up. As we go to the Lord in prayer, just doing a funeral yesterday for someone who died of COVID reminds me we're still in a pandemic, dear ones, and there are people that are still ill, and I'm not here to preach about shots or masks or anything else. Uh, you're Americans, and you can follow your God-given uh, conscience and the conviction. And, and by the way, let me just do say this. We have had several of our military members who have asked about a religious exemption letter. I asked Pastor Mark to prepare an exemption letter uh, for our military uh, personnel um, and, and the letter, just so you know, it states we, we can see both sides of this issue. Here's what we believe. Martin Luther in the Reformation said, I cannot go against my conscience. God help me. Uh, here I stand. I'm willing to take all the consequences. So we do believe that a Christian can in good faith say, I can receive it. Uh, that's another Christian can in good faith say, I cannot. And all we can do is give you a letter and say, we, we believe this person is a person of faith and they've arrived at this conviction biblically. And uh, so we support you in that regard. But it's a complicated day and age. Here's what Pastor Mike's going to focus on, preaching the Lord Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Because 100% of people, whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, whether you had COVID, didn't wear the mask, don't wear the mask, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're, you're in for an eternity separated from Christ, a Christless eternity. And so that's what our focus is going to be at Center View, though we do want to minister and we do want to pray right now to those, uh, for those who are homebound. My mother-in-law who's watching can't uh, you know, get out of the, that nursing home. And 
uh, our military men and women that are deployed around the globe. I got, had, a sister, uh, had a daughter that just texted me before the service. Hey, some of my neighbors are there today. I can't be there today. So uh, she's giving a, a shout out to Michael and Jamie. If you're here, thank you for coming. But uh, don't know who you are. Not going to single you out. But uh, uh, we want to pray for all of our military that are, that are deployed around the globe. I know uh, I have a son-in-law that's up there in Quantico helping with all the refugee stuff. You've got husbands that are up there and wives that are up there. We're praying for you today. And uh, we're, we're always going to use this time also to celebrate the tithes and offerings, even though we don't pass the plate anymore. Uh, the Centerview follows the, uh, the governmental fiscal year thing. So our church year ends on 30 September. There's a lot of reasons we do that for record purposes and so forth. But uh, so we're starting a new church year starting next Sunday as far as financially. I want to commend you for being faithful to the Lord uh, some churches have stopped giving to missions because of the pandemic. Centerview has not. In fact, this year we're increasing our missions giving. We're not decreasing it. We're increasing it. One of the missionaries we're going to pray for today is Caitlin Summers. She is serving the dear Lord Jesus in Singapore. And uh, let me just say that uh, Singapore is like a lot of places in America. Organized religion is uh, thumbs down. In fact, I just taught Church 101 class, and one of my favorite things when I go to someone's home and they say, I don't believe in organized religion, I say, oh man, is this your lucky day? Come to Center View, we're so disorganized, you're going to be so blessed, <laughs> you're going to just feel at home. <laughs> That's not what I was talking about, okay. But uh, here's what Caitlin's doing because of that. She's doing a coffee shop. And so people come to get, they do coffee in Singapore like they do in America, but when they go to her coffee shop, they get, they get Jesus. They get coffee beans and Jesus. And so uh, you can find different venues to tell people about the dear Lord Jesus. And we thank the Lord for Caitlin, uh, who's serving Lord Jesus in Singapore. That's part of Southeast Asia. And part of your tithes and offerings to, the Southern Baptist, to our church go to the Southern Baptist Convention that helps with missions causes like that. Our missionary, um, our offertory focus as far as stewardship is from the book of Nehemiah. Just real quick for those who are guests. Um, every Sunday we have a verse that relates to our, our stewardship, our, our sense that God owns everything that we have, and we just give back 10% to that which he blesses us with. And for the Christian, we literally believe, just like we believe that Jonah literally was swallowed by a great fish, uh, we literally believe that 90% for the Christian goes further than 100%. Can I explain it? No. Do I believe it? Yes. Have I experienced it? You betcha. Uh, it, it will. So here's the deal. Nehemiah was born in captivity. He was a, a servant of the, the king of an area that's uh, now known as uh, Iraq. And uh, the people uh, there, um, you know, uh, did horrible things to the Jewish people. But uh, Nehemiah wanted to get back to the homeland. He wanted to get back to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls and rebuild the the temple. And so he was the king's cupbearer. And the king said, why are you sad one day? He said, because my my homeland is destroyed, and, and the king gave him a, an edict, a letter, and gave him um, wood and different things and said, go, go, go do your wall. So here's what he said to the people once he got to Jerusalem. I said to them, you see the distress we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste, its gates are burned with fire. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem, that we may no longer be a reproach. He didn't want people to walk by and shake their head and say, why has God allowed this destruction to come to his city? I told them of my the hand of my God, which had been upon me for good, and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. And then they set their hands to this good work. So you see the situation is there that God gave them a leader. And the leader uh, brought a biblical vision and then sought to get a buy-in from the folks. And so the, it was the people that actually stood up and said, let us do this. We can do this thing uh, together. And there was, here's the thing, in spite of the pandemic, in spite of everything that's going on in our, in our world together, as, as families at Center View Baptist Church, we can continue to meet uh, the missions that God gives us here in our Jerusalem, ja you know, our Jacksonville, North Carolina, and even to the ends of the earth. Well, let's pray. And uh, for those of you that have a, a special need right now, God knows what things you have need of even before you ask. And as I pray a general prayer, uh, you just cry out to the Lord. He, he sees your heart. He knows your need. He knows your hurt. He cares. Father, we are so thankful that you are the Lord of all. And as we sang of your glory, 
we just proclaim the words of your apostle John as he was on the Isle of Patmos. He said, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And Master, we believe that that includes us. We were created to bring you joy. And we thank you that once your son becomes alive in our hearts and we are recreated in him, that we actually can bring you joy. And you give us your joy as a gift of the Spirit. And so, Father, we just want to worship you today in spirit and in truth. We want to give you praise and honor and glory. And Father, we do thank you that you are the God who cares about our hurts, about our discomforts, about our needs. And you've told us that we can cast all of our care upon you because you care for us. So, Master, we thank you for your care. We thank you, Father, that your care was supremely expressed to us by the cross of your Son. That though he knew no sin, he took upon the sin of the whole world. We all had a debt we could not pay. Jesus paid it, Father. And so we worship you today. We adore you. We ask that you would be glorified in the service and in the singing and the giving. We thank you for Miss Caitlin serving you in Singapore today, dear God. And thank you for her cleverness that you gave her to, to reach uh, the young and old alike in Singapore by just offering a cup of coffee and then the opportunity to tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. Father, we're asking today that you would bless our military men and women that are deployed around the globe, those who are some in harm's way, some working in strenuous environments, such as with the, the refugees and separated from their loved ones, separated from their own comforts of home. So God, bless them, encourage them. For those who are in the sick bed today, for those who are in the nursing home today, God, would you just give them cheer? And would you remind them that you are the God who is there and you are the God who cares? We love you, Lord. We ask you to take charge of this service now as we sing. And as your word is open, God, as we expound the word of God, oh, Father, we need you desperately. Be our true teacher and preacher. Forgive us of our sins, Master. Use this time to make us more like Jesus. We offer this prayer in his name. And all of God's children said, amen. Let's worship the Lord again through song. Let's stand and sing.
I don't know the author of the modern version of It Is Well. I know that the original hymn was inspired by someone who had lost all um, children, uh, if I recall, in a, in a horrible disaster. But out of that was birthed that song, It Is Well With My Soul. It reminds me of Job, who lost it all. Uh, literally, his, uh, all of his kiddos and all of his uh, wealth in, in one day, in, in four um, sudden catastrophic events. And yet 